so how did you get into the IT field? Like, is this something that you ever always wanted to do or, uh, you know, just how, how you kind of what what brought you to tech? <laughs> so, so I've always loved computers, like even as a kid, as soon as I could get my hands on a computer, I got my hands on like an 8086 way, way back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and it wasn't until like probably the 486 days and Windows 95 that I was really just like fascinated with them. I didn't even play like console games really after Super Nintendo. So to date me a little bit, probably in that early 90s, uh, I moved everything to computers and just kind of obsessed with them. But like everybody, getting started in the field was very difficult. And I would say I did sales. I did like retail management for a little bit before I actually was able to break into tech. And how I broke in was through that avenue. I actually just networked with folks and then was able to get a tech job saying, hey, I've, I've done this stuff. I can do it and I can do it better than a lot of your other employees. Just give me a shot. And it, it took a little bit uh, of convincing, but you know, my boss was like, all right, go for it Titus and uh, that's how I got going and that was you know 2003 2002 when I did my first uh, tech support job and that was with uh, Best Buy back then right as they were acquired by Geek Squad back in that transition oh man I was <laughs> I was 18 years old when you started that man <laughs> just out of high school man but uh, yeah I, w I wasn't too far ahead of you about five five or six years so mm -hmm. I actually got started pretty pretty early cool 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 so um like if let's let's just roll right into the next question if someone was trying to get into the it field you know where do you think they should start and this is kind of like the meat of the conversation i know I'm trying yeah. to stick here a little longer <laughs> yeah yeah no no like uh, when it comes to getting started that's always the tricky thing and uh, it is such a broad field uh, a lot of people think, hey, if you're good with computers, you just must be good at all the stuff in IT. And that's just not the case. Everyone has their specialties. And I, I'm a kind of a jack of all trades. I know a bit about everything. There's certain things I do specialize in. Usually anything with Windows Server, I'm your guy. Doesn't matter what it is. I usually can take that and run with it. But when you get started and trying to break in is the most difficult thing for me and uh, getting that experience was the biggest thing. A lot of people always ask, hey, what cert should you get? What degrees you should get? And really, it's it's more about, the. I, I would say it's not about the degrees or certs. They help get your foot in the door or maybe check a tick, you know, check one of those boxes on in an interview. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's networking being able to get in trying to get like a cold call interview with no experience that's a that's a tough go so try to get some kind of parallel tech experience or intern somewhere uh getting that first level of experience is more more important than a degree or a cert not to discount those they do hold some weight in an interview but at the end of the day, it's what can you do? And prepping for that is is probably the biggest thing. Okay, cool, cool. So um, do you do in order to get those? I know nowadays in order to get those a lot of those uh, tech interns, um, college is somewhere where you find find those interns uh, and yeah. they use some of your your experience in college to kind of help you uh achieve those interns because that's considered somewhat experience as well so what are your thoughts on that right so i i, I like i hate college like I, yeah. I i'm just in that camp I, i'm you know if you're watching from you know not america just know uh growing up it was hey if you don't get a college degree you're a loser you're not gonna amount to anything and that's basically what i was told growing up and after going through a year of college and, and the professors, I was just, it, I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm spending all this money and I feel like I'm not getting what I feel like I should get. What you get from college is really networking and, and talking to folks and internships and those types of things are possible. They open up some opportunities. But for me, I was like, screw it. I'm just going to go a different route. And 
when I got in and I was doing desktop support and just real line level stuff that pretty much I think everyone can get in and do with no experience. I had a good friend of mine that had already the experience and the job working for businesses and doing that. So what I did was I just kind of was like, hey, man, you need help with this. And he's like, yeah, dude, you're not going to learn Jack doing desktop support. If you want to get into servers, you need you need to come on with me, but I'm not going to pay you. And I was like, all right, that's cool, man. We'll go out and I would actually just finish my nine to five went to uh, do a little migration for it with him and help set up the server and just kind of got to shadow him. And that was kind of like my very first break in. And his name was Mike Medeiros. And uh, he was kind of the person that I was able to uh, so much mentor, but also just kind of get my foot in. And uh, we've worked together at like five or six different jobs now. Um, wow. It, it's been wild how a lot of those early relationships from 20 years ago have mattered and uh, how we first met is just ridiculous he was a supervisor for fry's electronics not even doing any kind of tech stuff he just had a tech background but uh it, it's it's very interesting i couldn't can't emphasize enough establishing those relationships don't burn bridges those types yeah. of things because you just never know who you're gonna run into yeah. uh and it's amazing and i have a lot of stories like that where I, i've just run into people that you would never think in a thousand years would be in that tech field where i think uh, from geek squad days I, I ran into people 10 years after i had left and they were working for a different like law firm that i was interfacing with i mean just crazy stuff like that so always always be nice to people oh, yeah. always um I, I see too much. A lot of people are at, you see some elitism a, a bit mm -hmm. in the IT industry and it's real important not to, not to be that and also be personable. You know, there's, there's so many just basic things that I say a lot of technicians just forget. They, a lot of times they think it's what you know, but it's really who you know. And, and that, it's just so true in so many ways. Yeah, so you can't be that that uh, geeky guy sitting in back in the server room no more. <laughs> Got to be more <laughs> personal. Well, I, I so yeah, I've done both, so it's kind of yeah, funny. I've done it too. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, you know, I I was a director position, and that position I actually got a lot of hands on, and also had to manage a whole team. So I was uh, working a lot in, in that type of thing, but. It was nice to kind of pull back and now I'm working part time for a small business and I love just going in and, uh, you know, I, I go in about two days a week and I don't know, there's something magical about just fixing a computer or fixing a person's problem where I'm, I'm nobody of any prestige in that position. I'm just their tech guy that they can just say, hey, I need uh, this done and it could be the most simple thing, but there's a lot of enjoyment in that and i i love that aspect coming back down from uh being a director and, and managing people i think a lot of people fantasize about uh management and those types of things and executive positions and, uh i've been there and i gotta say uh i didn't enjoy it it was not very fulfilling in, in my point but kudos to those that want to go for that mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's it's probably kind of stressful, you know, dealing with the budgeting of running like an IT department because it's always like bare bones <laughs> based on the people that I've worked to and their grief that they've given me <laughs> about it. it. It's always that way. Uh, and, and no, I think every single IT department's like underfunded unless like yeah. a hack just happened and then the company lost like millions. And then, of course, their budget goes to like, oh, we need to fix that mm -hmm. so you know I, I love that meme where the guy's like okay here's the IT security budget and he's counting pennies and then after the ransomware attack he has like hundred dollar you know hundred dollars bill stacks just all over the place and I'm just like yes <laughs> that is so true um, but it's important to um, be able to break down complex technical things into simplistic ways to digest. A lot of people don't realize when they're talking to a CTO or a CIO uh, or even a CEO, if you get that high, a lot of times they just want a certain objective met and you need to be able to break down these complex problems into 
simplistic or, or um, bite-sized things for them to be able to digest it. Because if you're not saying, okay, if we don't update this NAS box, we could have a crash. And if we have a crash, then, well, we could have hours of downtime. Every single minute we were down, that would be about $5,000. And when you put it in that type of language, they're like, okay, so we should get that done because if we do go down, that's going to cost us, let's say we go down for a whole day, it's going to cost us probably a million dollars. And then they're like, okay, well, that $100,000 price tag on that NAS box no longer looks bad. And it's those types of things where uh, really separate when you get in into that field. And I think starting off when you, you do that, always try and talk through your problems or be able to uh, reiterate back to your client, hey, this is what's wrong. And then here's how I'm going to fix it and try and tell them without their eyes glazing over. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to definitely fail a bunch at that. But uh, uh, my favorite, you know, it's just one of those things you have to learn to break down some, you know, these real complex problems into simplistic um, ways for folks to digest. Yeah.